If you are the most ambitious person that you know, you are going to play small for life. Look around at your friends, your family, the people that you hang out with. What do they want out of life? If you're the one always pushing them and no one's pushing you, guess what happens? You don't get the push that you need and you stay in mediocrity, being the best in a group of unambitious people. So I just came back from an event in Florida that I was doing a keynote at, and at the end, I challenged an entrepreneur who showed up to make some changes on his YouTube channel. We met over dinner, I helped him with his YouTube channel, it was him and his business partner sitting there, and I said, by tomorrow, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go in and make sure you have these things updated. And he said, yes, I'll do it. I said, it's important to do it by tomorrow because I'm still here, I'm still here in the morning. If you need anything, you can ask me face to face while I'm still here before I fly home to Toronto. Yes, I'll do it. Next morning comes around. We show up in a meeting, I got a meetup happening, we got, I don't know, 30 people who showed up to, to meet with me, and I see him out of the corner of my eye, sitting at the back of the room, and I say, hey, did you do the thing that I told you to do? And he said, no, I didn't do it. I said, why, what happened? He said, well, we, we, we were doing lots of other stuff, it's been a full day, you know, we had this entire day of, of speaking and, and meeting people, and then so much information went home, we were doing all this kind of work. Okay, great, but what about the promise that you made to me to do it? And then his business partner chimes in and said, you know, it's actually my fault. I told him, Evan's probably not gonna notice. He's not gonna remember. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it when we all fly back home. And so I told him, don't let your business partner's low standards prevent you from moving forward on the things that you said you were gonna do. Staying committed to the thing that you say you're gonna do, your word to yourself is the whole game. Forget about what you just say to other people. What do you do for yourself? Because we're often looking for no's. We're often looking for somebody else to give us a break, right? He's been working hard and, and he is. And I know him and I know his business partner and these guys are not slackers. They're not slackers. And, and I was poking a little bit at his business partner saying his low expectations, his low standards. But in this situation, it was true. The entrepreneur that I was speaking to said he was gonna do this thing by tomorrow morning before he came and went to my event. He would do it. And his business partner says he's not gonna remember. Don't worry, we've worked too hard already. Let it go. We'll do it when we get home. And they would do it when they got home. I know they would. He's looking for the reason not to do it. When you say you wanna hit the gym, when you say you wanna hit these business goals, when you say you wanna have this outcome and be proud of the effort that you put in every day, when you say that you're gonna do something, there will be moments where you wanna let yourself off the hook, where you say, ah, I work so hard, or I'm so tired, or I deserve a break, right? This is the language you use to yourself. And so when that happens, you're looking for affirmations from the people around you. And if you are the most ambitious person in your friend group, if you are the most ambitious person, what's gonna happen? They're gonna say, you already worked so hard anyway. What are you talking about? Yes, of course, give yourself the break. And it's the exact answer that you're looking for because you wanna give yourself a break. Now, if you're proud of your effort, maybe you should take a break. But it's not because somebody with lower standards gave you the pass. It's because you're proud of the effort that you put in. And so this is where it gets really dangerous. When you are the most successful, the most ambitious person from the people around you, they're always gonna give you a reason to play smaller. You can't accept it. You have to push through. You need to change your environment. I'm gonna give you three ways to do it. Step number one is collect good people. I like to say I'm in the business of collecting good people. You wanna collect good, somebody that you meet on the, on the street, at an event, online, collect them. Find ways to stay in touch. Follow them on Instagram and on YouTube and comment on their stuff. Tell them, sometimes it gets super awkward. I've, I've told people, I really like you. I really love your style. I really like everything you're doing. I just wanna stay in touch. And maybe that means you're just DMing them when you have questions. Maybe that means you're setting something formal up or you're having a coffee meeting every month to connect. Maybe that means you're asking them you know, business questions when you have them. There's a lot of different ways that the relationship can take shape. And this is where a lot of people fall down is you expect to have the answer in your head and when you don't know what the relationship will look like, you don't go for it because you don't know what to present. You don't know what to pitch. You don't know what to say. And so you say nothing. And that's the worst case scenario. Don't do that. Tell somebody, I love your vibe. I love the energy. How do we stay in touch? And then whatever flows, flows. You have to be in the business of collecting good people. You want good people around you, not just for your team, but people who are your peers, people who can be your mentors. Because when you get that situation, when you say, I promised myself that I would do this tomorrow, I promised myself that before tomorrow morning this would happen, the people around you are saying, dude, what are you doing? Let's go. 
Not, ah, oh, you work so hard, you deserve a break. No, let's go. You promised yourself you would do it. Come on. They pull you up to be the best version of you. Step number two is get aspirational mentors. I love being around people who've done a lot more than me. This is actually my default. I don't really have people in my life who push me to be better. I don't have too many people around me say, Evan, you really suck at this. Let's go, get better, get better, get better. I get most of mine from aspirational mentors, from, from Steve Jobs and AP Janini and Howard Schultz and Kanye West, the videos that I put up every single day on my channel. So I had a buddy of mine say, I really love it when you do a David Goggins video. Or another one yesterday said, I really love it when you do Kobe Bryant. Great, if you know that Kobe inspires you or David inspires you, then surround yourself with him, right? Watch their YouTube videos, watch their interviews, have a Google alert that comes at any time it says Kobe Bryant interview or David Goggins interview, you get a notification. Listen to their podcast if they have one, read their book, listen to their audios, right? As much as possible, be around that because the more you are around that, they're training you to think like they think. They're pulling you up to their level, even if you never meet them. That's what I try to do with my channel every day is I need it selfishly for myself. There's people that I surround myself with daily. I want Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey and these people pulling me up to make me better. So get yourself some aspirational mentors. The people that you look up to and say, man, I wish you could be like them, you can. You just have to think like them. And the way to think like them and act like them and have the mindset of them is to be around them more often. And step number three is have play bigger triggers. I like having triggers in my environment that force me to remind myself of who I am, of who I would like to be, of what I'm becoming. So you can have the greatest day of all time. Maybe you watch this video and you're fired up, you get motivated and say, yes, I'm gonna go and do some work, awesome. You're gonna wake up tomorrow and be the person who you used to be again. You wake up tomorrow and it's a new day. Every day is a new day. And so you might remember to do something, but chances are you may not. And so that's why having play bigger triggers in your environment, you set them up once and it reminds you to go off and play a bigger game. So my office, there's a bunch of play bigger triggers here, right? There's, there's mentors of mine, including my parents, who are looking at me every time I walk into here. There's, there's the awards down here, which remind me of what I do, that, that a million people have Subscribe to my channel, now we're at two. It's a crazy number that when I'm coming to make a video, lots of people are watching it. I have my neck braces down there to remind myself of when I broke my neck and kept going on my tour. I've got my Doritos here to remind myself that I'm stronger than these Doritos. Damn the Doritos. These things are stronger than me? No, all I wanna do is eat this bag every single day. And standing here is a reminder of how awesome I am. At least that's what I'm telling myself, right? They're all play bigger triggers. So what's in your physical environment? What's the background on your cell phone? What's the background on your desktop? How can you set up your environment once, just with some thoughtful thinking once, that then every time you walk into it, it lifts you up. If you want another Evan Rant video that just might give you the confidence you need, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. The fastest way to change your life is to be around the people who think like the way you want to think. Through videos, 